Hi, I'm Professor Lynn Ritchie. In this video, I would like to introduce you to the scientific method. In order to do this, we're going to take a look at the work of Emil Durkheim and his study of suicide. Durkheim indicates that sociologists are interested in social facts. Social facts are realities that are external to the individual. On the other hand, psychologists are interested in internal realities or the consciousness. Durkheim suggests that there can be no sociology unless society exists, and societies do not exist if these are only individuals. Durkheim encouraged the use of the scientific method to study societal patterns or social facts. All sciences, including the social sciences, use the scientific method. The scientific method is simply a series of steps that researchers take when they design their studies. Let's take a look at these steps. The first step is to define the problem. The second is to review the literature. Third, identify variables. Fourth, formulate hypothesis. Fifth, determine the research methods. Sixth, data analysis. And finally, drawing conclusions. Let's see how Durkheim used the scientific method in his study of suicide. Durkheim began by defining the problem and selecting a topic to research. Durkheim was interested in demonstrating, especially to other sociologists, that social facts can be identified through the use of the scientific method. He wanted to show how external realities impact individual behaviors. Durkheim noticed that the suicide rates for societies remain relatively stable over time. His research asked the question, why would a society's suicide rate remain stable over time? What external factors contribute to this stability? The scientific method requires a researcher to become familiar with the existing theory and research on a topic. We refer to this as reviewing the literature. Research is built on prior knowledge. Durkheim reviewed several psychological theories of suicide, and he also reviewed biological theories and what he referred to as cosmic theories. From this review of the literature, the researcher will then specify the meaning of the concepts and variables that are going to be studied. It is the process through which we specify precisely what we will mean when we use particular terms. Durkheim recognized suicide is a personal choice with many psychological reasons for choosing it. However, he thought that many social facts are operating in this personal choice based on his observation of a society's suicide rate remaining stable over time. So he's asking what causes higher or lower societal suicide rates. Durkheim suggested that the degree of social solidarity in a society influences the suicide rate. Social solidarity is the degree to which a society is integrated or held together as a solid whole. The opposite of high social solidarity is a high degree of individualism. This is the conceptual definition of social solidarity. Durkheim conceptually defined suicide as all cases of death resulting directly or indirectly from a positive or negative act of the victim himself, which he knows will produce this result. Once we have our conceptual definition, we can begin to formulate hypothesis. A hypothesis is a logical statement about the way in which two or more variables are related. In its simplest form, a hypothesis will consist of two types of variables, dependent variables and independent variables. A dependent variable is what we are trying to explain. Durkheim's dependent variable is societal suicide rates. An independent variable would be a factor thought to influence the dependent variable. 
Durkheim's independent variable is social solidarity. Durkheim's conceptual hypothesis is that low social solidarity will lead to higher suicide rates and high social solidarity will lead to lower suicide rates. Next, a researcher must specify the ways in which the variables will be observed and the method used to make the observations. How will we actually observe the variables under study? An operational definition is the concrete, specific definition of a variable in terms of the operations by which observations are to be categorized. Durkheim's operational definition of suicide is societal suicide rates. How did Durkheim observe social solidarity? Durkheim suggested that certain societal groups and groupings are more socially integrated than others. For example, he thought Catholics were more socially integrated than Protestants. Durkheim's observations included religious affiliation, region, marital status, biological sex, parental status, and educational attainment. Once we have our operational definitions, we can create our operational hypothesis or the specification of the expected relationship between the operational variables to support the theory. Durkheim's operational hypothesis included religious affiliation will influence the suicide rates. People affiliated with Judaism will have lower suicide rates than people affiliated with Catholicism or Protestantism. And people affiliated with Catholicism will have lower suicide rates than people affiliated with Protestantism. He also thought that regional differences will influence suicide rates. People residing in smaller communities will have lower suicide rates than people residing in urban areas. Marital status will also influence the suicide rate. People who are married will have lower suicide rates than people who are not married. Biological sex will influence suicide rates. Females will have lower suicide rates than males. Parental status will influence suicide rates. People who are parents will have lower suicide rates than people who are not parents. And educational attainment will influence the suicide rates. People with lower levels of education will have lower suicide rates than people with higher levels of education. Next, a researcher must decide how they will observe the variables. What data will be used to test the hypothesis? In the social sciences, we talk about primary source data, and this is where the researcher collects the information. Some examples would be surveys, participant observation, interviews, experiments, content analysis, or they can use secondary source data and this is using information collected by others. And this includes a large number of databases and archives, as well as direct from the source, for example, governmental data or international data. Durkheim used existing secondary data, data that he did not collect himself. He used government records from several countries. Researchers will make a distinction between the population and a sample. The population is who or what we are trying to draw conclusions about in our research, whereas a sample is a subgroup of people from the population who are selected to participate in our study. An important question here is whether the sample reflects the population that we want to understand better. Durkheim used population data, deaths as recorded by a government agency, so he did not need a sample. Once our observations are made, we can proceed to data analysis. The first step in data analysis is data processing, or transforming the data collected into a form that's appropriate to manipulate and analyze. Once the data is processed, we can begin our analysis. 
working with and examining the data to shed light on our hypothesis, this usually involves some form of statistical analysis. Durkheim's analysis found support for the following hypothesis. Jewish suicide rates were lower than Catholics and Protestants, and Catholic suicide rates were lower than Protestant rates. Rural suicide rates were lower than urban rates. Married people had lower suicide rates than people not married. Females had lower suicide rates than males. Parents had lower suicide rates than people without children. And people with lower levels of educational attainment had lower suicide rates than people with higher levels of educational attainment. Durkheim is doing two things. First, he's establishing the existence of social facts, and he's making careful observations. From these systematic observation, Durkheim concluded that people who are more integrated into societal structures or groups are less likely to commit suicide. When researchers are considering the methods of their observation, two important aspects become important for researchers. And this is reliability and validity. Reliability and validity are linked to the conceptualization and the operationalization of the concepts or the variables. Reliability is the ability to produce the same data each time in repeated observation of the same phenomenon. Whereas validity is when an operational definition accurately reflects the conceptual definition. Are we observing what we think we are observing? If you think about a bathroom scale, we can get on the bathroom scale day after day and it will measure us very reliably with our weight. However, if we decided to uh, fudge a little bit on our weight and drop it by five pounds, then it's not a valid measure of our actual weight. So here we can see an operational definition may be reliable, but it may not be valid. Finally, a researcher will draw conclusions. They will summarize the outcome of the study, indicating its significance, relating the findings to existing theory and research, and identifying ideas for future research. After careful analysis, Durkheim added to his theory by identifying four types of suicide. Egoistic suicide, this is an absence of social integration. They have weak social ties. They're considered outside of society, and these would be maybe referred to as a loner. Altruistic suicide, this is where we have too much social integration. There's extremely strong social ties. You think of soldiers or suicide bombers. Anomic suicide, this is where there is few social regulations or norms and rules. We see this during rapid social change, like economic downturns or with sudden wealth. And finally, fatalistic suicide. This is where we see tight social regulations with little room for social change. We can think about this in terms of slavery situation, domestic violence, and even some cults. If you would like to test some of Durkheim's hypothesis, try using the World Population Review with their country rankings by suicide rate. Try comparing the suicide rates between North American Protestant countries like Canada and the United States with Central and South American countries that are more Catholic like Peru, Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina. Or try looking at the biological sex, male versus female suicide rates for any countries. What did you discover? Okay, thanks for watching.